Hey guys, this is Jeremy Nett out here at Permanet Acres, and uh, what you're seeing here is what what progress I've had on this rocket mass heater build that I'm working on right now. I've decided to add one of my heat risers that I made the past year, uh, trimmed around the outside, and that way it match up with this 15 gallon barrel that lined up the holes. Uh, and I'm planning on coating this whole thing with my refractory lining cement, like I did with the the crucible, which is sitting over here, and coating coating this little heat riser, coat it cleaning off the magnesium silicate all the way down and then coating that also and coating the outside wall of this heat riser here now what progress I made is I've cut cut out the spot for the the wood feed in here I poured a layer of dense refract castable refractory in the bottom and then once it once it cured up good, slid the bottom fire brick in place, which was which I poured it specifically so that the bottom brick would line up with exactly with the the bottom of the the mouth of the little rocket stove that I made the last year, and then cut my two fire bricks to height on the sides, and then ran the top fire brick, and then I went through and. Ran some, mixed up some refractory, went around the, the outside of both walls and filled in on the inside here just to make sure it was thoroughly encased. Uh, broke up some fire brick and kind of dumped it in the bottom here where I just basically need some fill space anyway. And then I'll be cutting, cutting out for the for the pipe at where the very top of it will match up with the same height as the very top of the mouth of the feed. It's set at 24 inches down from the top here. So the very top of the out pipe will be set at 24 inches. And then once I get it in place, I'll set the 30 gallon drum down in place, mark mark the inside and outside edge of the 30 gallon drum make a cut in the actual pipe itself cut it down the middle and peel both sides out and then I'm planning on pouring refractory in all the way around at the 24 inch mark in fully level and having it so that the mouth the opening on the out pipe will match perfectly up with 30 gallon drum once it's set in place. And then from there we'll just do our burn trials to verify what height I want to have the 30 gallon set from from the heat riser itself whether I want to go like 6 inch, 4 inch, 3 inch, 2 inch gap. It'll it all depends on on the, the coal on the air draw and and the burn and then also I'm gonna be working I need to start planning out exactly how I want uh, the stratification chambers set up and the the mass unit put in place but first I'm gonna have to pull out the wood burning furnace so I gotta unbolt it and then slide it out uh, put my two stratification chambers in place, line them up, see where I'm going to have to make the cuts cuts for the pipes in them, uh, the clean outs, and then once I got everything lined up and cut and put, put in place on there, then I will start working on cobbing it in place and running my 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 heat draw. So I'm planning on using uh, natural air draw for heating so I'm going to be running like a pipe through the cob itself where it's going to have an open and a bottom to draw in the cool air and then the cool air will flow through the pipe be heated by the mass itself and then it will flow into the air ducting so I'm going to see how well it works and the majority of the, the purpose of this build 
is to make it so we don't that the only time that this ever runs that this propane furnace is if if it is really cold out and we're on vacation I'm planning on eliminate per, eliminating the use of this except for in situations when we're not home so and then the only time we're I really like how propane stoves work, so we got a propane stove, but it doesn't use much propane at all to use it all year round, so most of it's just to make it so that we don't have to utilize the the propane furnace except for when we're gone. And then have this as our main as our number one unit. Uh, that way we're burning our wood extremely efficiently and heating the house extremely efficiently and not having to having most of it's to cut out the spend on this because we spend we probably spend anywhere from 600 eh, it's more it's probably about five, 550 to close to nine hundred dollars a year in propane if we run off of this if we run strictly off of propane during the winter it's around nine hundred dollars if we supplement with wood heat with this thing it, it kind of balances out and keeps it about five hundred dollars for the year but I'd really like it to have it where during the winter that this is the majority of our heat so We'll see how well this build goes. I've been rambling on and I'm going to let you guys go. So this is Jay signing off. Later, later.